You know, I was on Instagram the other day, and I saw someone post a picture of themselves at a roller skating rink, and um, I just started thinking about it, like, when have we just ever gone roller skating for, like, no reason, just to go roller skating? Never. <laughs> yeah, the only time we've ever really, like, gone roller skating is for, like, parties we've been invited to. Mm-hmm. I mean, last week I was talking about 90s fashion coming back. This week I'm talking about 90s activities coming back. You know what? No, 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 I was uh, wrong. Just, just drop it now. Yeah, it's more, it's more 80s. No. Oh, never mind. Welcome to Rock It to Anywhere, the show whose hosts have a sudden urge to improve their sign language skills. Yup. That's the only one of these things at the beginning of the show that I'm actually going to agree to. If you're wondering what that silence was there, it's because I just greeted Sophia in ASL. Why so much You do know I can't see you, right? I know, I know. Well, I I still did. I guess that's a simulation of you being blind and... Anyway. If If you're you're blind and deaf, you have no way of communicating. No, Helen Keller did sign language and she was blind and deaf, wasn't she? I don't know. Wasn't she, like, in one of those fairy tales? Helen Keller is not a fairy tale. She is to me. Part of the the Ness Family Home Entertainment box set. Anyway, if you're wondering why there's so much talk of of sign language, it's because this week's discussion, or topic time, is on the Amazon original film Wonderstruck, based on the book of the same name by the wonderful writer Brian Selznick. The Wonder Book. Yeah, Wonder Book. I haven't seen Flying House. Remember Flying House? Oh, yeah. That that was an interesting show. We need to watch that again. Anyway, this week we're going to be talking about Wonderstruck, and we're going to be learning a word I invented. Then we're going to actually learn a cool fact about golf. Like, you would never think golf is cool, but I actually have a cool fact about that. And then we have an interesting thoughts of the week. Don't discriminate against people's opinions. I, I can't stand golf, okay? I mean, it does make your back hurt, but... It's just hitting it's a fun. ball with a stick. I mean, that's baseball. Well, before we go on, let's do some follow-up. We just have a couple pieces here. First of all, last week, we talked about Just Said Magic Season 2B, and we uh, you know, brought up the question, is there going to be another season? Well, it was actually confirmed on Twitter by the actress who plays Hannah and said, uh, this was the response, I'm glad you love this season of Hashtag Just Said Magic. There will be more episodes in the near future. Stay tuned, and thanks for watching. So, it is confirmed. There will be another season coming soon. Yeeps. Now, they she did say near future. And I was thinking about it. I was like, you know what? They did take a long time to make just one season of 13 episodes. Maybe they pre-filmed another season and they're just editing it. Because, you know, they couldn't have spent all those, like, 14 months making Hamilton covers on YouTube. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was, that was terrible. How do three kids... Okay, I'm not going to go on. What's your thought of the week? Like, whenever Disney releases a movie, they should release two of them at the same time. So, like, you go watch both of them because one of them is from one point of view and the other one's from the other point of view. Yeah, I saw that on Reddit. It said, like, one's from the villain point of view and one's from the superhero point of view. Mm -hmm. And then after you watch it, you don't know who's the villain or who's the good one because they both had good stories. Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends on the writer. Or it depends which one you watch first. My thought of the week, landfills and dumps are going to be archaeological wonderlands in a couple hundred years. What? Yeah. Just like, remember how a couple weeks back I said, um, you know, when when archaeologists find Disney World or Disneyland and they dig it up, they're going to be like, what is this mouse kingdom we found? Well, when they they dig up landfills and our dumps, they're going to be thinking, it's just like wonderlands full of all sorts of junk and things. Well, now to learn a word. Last week, Sophia invented a word, can't, can't, and ain't. This week, I invented a word. If you all is shorted to y'all, why can't we shorten we all to wall? Wall. So you just like, the apostrophe would be between the W and the all. Yeah. Yeah. So wall. So Jordan Taylor's we all need each other's wall need each other. Each other. 
Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. We all need each other. Joke time! Okay. When you burn your mouth eating, that's the food cooking you back. Food gets revenge. That's why I cook my food and then I put it in the freezer. Boom. I used to have a problem with people who do that, but then now that I'm an old person, I do that myself. I mean, like, I've done it since I was a kid. Like, come on. Mm-hmm. Yes, I understand. It came from the freezer, you cooked it, and then you put it back. But you know what? It's fine. What's the difference between a knight and a reindeer? I don't know. One slays a dragon, the other is dragon a slay. Wow, but they both slay! Okay. There are four stages in life. First, you believe in Santa, then you don't believe in Santa, then you act like Santa, then you look like Santa. It's like that riddle of the the Egyptian riddle that they, they did on Word Girl a while back, like, what what starts on four legs, then goes to two legs, then goes to three legs, then goes to no legs? Mm. It's a baby, then a human, then an old person with a cane, and then a person in a wheelchair. <laughs> How do you make a paper plane? Don't write anything on it? Yeah, you basically got it. It just says, erase the writing. Mm. Is the S or the C silent in scent? I think the C is. Sure. I think so. Because scent is like a penny. Scent is uh-huh. S-E-N-T, and that's not silent. And if you you have scent, S-E-N-T, that's I sent you to do that, it's not silent. So which one's silent? So yeah, probably the S is silent. Or maybe you just pronounce them together. Just like the people who put the two L's in Llama, or the two A's in Aaron. Mm. Or the two E's in Ethan. That has never made sense to the, me. The, the, like, no. Someone just wrote a little extra on your birth certificate. Yeah. <laughs> What's a cherry's favorite way to travel? By a cherry picker. Close, in a chariot. What? A, I'm I, more modern. <laughs> yeah, I prefer the cherry picker. Okay. Did we ever tell uh, anyone about that time when we did the zip line and the... Like, the zip line was too long, so you just sagged halfway through. <laughs> so they had to come pick you up in a cherry picker. Oh, I have a funny story about that. So my friend, when we were at um, camp, like, two years ago, um, she rode the zip line. And she's, like, really tiny and skinny and light. And so she was riding it, and she went all the way to the end, and it looked like she hit the pole. You would think heavier people would do that, though. Yeah, but because it sags down, they stop. Hmm. And if you're light, it doesn't sag, so you just keep Yeah. Going. This is, um, like, if aliens were real. So it says, do you realize that if aliens come to Earth, we will have to explain why we made movies about where we fight and kill them? <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. And then they're like, oh, it's okay. We make movies about you guys. <laughs> to the man in the wheelchair that stole my camouflage jacket, <laughs> you can hide, but you can't run. Wow. Just because he's camouflage. Swimming is like going to an alternate dimension where you can fly but you can't breathe. <laughs> it's basically space. I mean, that's why they train in space. For I mean, that's why they train in water for space. <laughs> yeah, you have to train in space to swim. <laughs> okay, tra- go train in space before you can go swimming. Uh-huh. I have a horse named Mayo. Not a kid. Mayonnaise. Wow. Okay, now on to today I learned. Apparently, Sophia has some <gasps> something like one. amazing. I actually have one. I actually have one. Be proud of me. Somebody give me, somebody clap. She's been hyping this up for like two weeks already. So better be good. To understand a pun, your brain's right and left hemispheres. They're called hemispheres? Okay. I have to work together due to the unique structure of the joke. Today I learned that CBS, you know, the TV station, used Christian to add... Christian Broadcasting Schools. <laughs> I put Canadian Broadcasting System. No, wait. Christian Biblical School. System. System. School. Whatever. It's actually okay. the Corporation of Broad... No, Corporate... I don't know what it stands for. It's something American. You <laughs> used to add bird sounds. Kool-Aid bacon sauce. <laughs> That's American. <laughs> 
Today I learned that CBS used to add bird songs to their golf broadcast to get rid of awkward silences until they got caught by someone who was watching at home. He knew that the bird songs belonged to birds that did not live in the region in which the golf tournament was being played. Wow. So smart. I know. Smart people watch golf. Who knew? I saw a comment uh, in the comment section of this article that said that other channels add helicopter sounds to bike races because the, the cameras aren't mic'd. Spoiler warning. What we're about to discuss is Wonderstruck. We will spoil the entire movie, the plot twist, and everything. He will spoil it. I keep my shield door. Thing. Shield. Spoiler Whatever. shield. Yes. That is all. Back to the podcast. Okay, let's move on to our topic time. This week we're going to be talking about the Amazon original film, Wonderstruck, which, speaking of it being an Amazon original, it, uh, for some reason, they, they released it in movie theaters first before putting it on, like, Prime Video, which was, I think, a first for them. They've done some others like this, but anyway, thought that was interesting. If you haven't seen the film before, I'll be reading the synopsis here, or more of the, the log line for it. Ben and Rose are children from two different eras who secretly wish their lives were different. Ben longs for the father he has never known, while Rose dreams of a mysterious actress whose life she chronicles in a scrapbook. When Ben discovers a puzzling clue in his home, and Rose reads an enticing headline in the newspaper, both children set out on quests that unfold with a mesmerizing symmetry. Okay, okay, I'm not snoring. Come on. I know, I know. Okay. Basically, what I'm saying, no, he's saying what I'm saying. Don't read the book because it's confusing. I didn't even get it, even though I watched the movie first. I didn't get the book, but I got the movie. It's good. I got it. If you're going to read the book, just know that they don't take place in the same time. Okay. Well, it's explained in the book. No, it's not. I, I read it. I have to it. say the opposite of what you're saying because I think the book was more clear than the movie was. Especially with the opening. Like, that was my really, my really only main complaint, or only, my my only complaint about this entire movie. And that's that act one of of the movie just felt very confusing. I had read the book already, so I knew what it meant. But I was wondering, like, you, a person who had not read the book before watching the movie, and uh, some other people had watched the movie along side us not not with us but you know i recently watched it they told me it's, it's it's confusing the first act is so confusing and it's just because i felt the pacing was really off in the first act the the explanation like sophia was, was looking over the book before we started recording and she's like wait ben was already deaf and i said yeah he was already deaf in one ear but that wasn't explained in the movie but it doesn't mean anything anyway I mean, I, because I get... if you if you if that actually happened, you would end up being deaf in both ears. You wouldn't be deaf in just one ear just because it was only on that side. Yeah, you'd probably have brain issues too. So. Well, I mean, there are there are lots of stories of people get struck struck by lightning and are fine. I was thinking about how like the the first act could be improved, and I thought, you know what? What if the movie started off? with the car crash with 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 the car crash you know that caused Ben to go live with Zen and Uncle so like you know open up the film starts on the day of the car crash car crash happens uh and then the funeral happens or something and then we'll do like a 3 months later thing and it dissolves and then it opens where this movie opened you know in the bedroom with uh, his nightmare of the wolves i think that could have been a better opening mm now, when uh, Ben finds the book Wonderstruck, according to this book, you know, the book that the movie was based on, Wonderstruck is supposed to be a small little blue book, like River Song's Diary in, in Doctor Who, but mm-hmm. it's like a big, wide, like, picture book, which I was like, ah, I mean, I guess the only reason I could think that they did that, I mean, it's it's such a small thing, but the only reason I could think they did it is because, you know, they had to get a big picture of the Cabinet of Wonders into the book. Mm. So in the book, he finds the bookmark, you know, it says from Danny or Dan or what it said there. And here's where another complaint I had real. But this is like also, I guess, my second play uh, yeah, to, to here. The movie made it seem like Ben on a whim just, you know, decided to go to New York and that he was always pestering his mom about his dad. When in the book, he was only he'd only like asked about it twice before. Well, they had to set up. 
that he that she never talked about him. That's what they were I trying guess to so. do. Yeah. I mean, they didn't have a lot of time to show it. And they didn't make a big deal out of that quote, we're all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. That quote was supposed to be important. Like his mom said, what does it mean to you? No, she said, what do you think it means? Whatever, it's the same thing. And before I go on, you know, complaining about differences between the book and the movie, yes, I do know the guy who wrote the book also wrote the movie. Mm -hmm. So... I've heard uh, talks with lots of authors who talk about their books getting adapted for movies, and they say, like, the movie is the chance, second chance they get to fix the way they wish the book should have gone. Mm. So maybe this is how he wanted the book to go. I don't know. Yeah, because the book wasn't written right. Mm. In the in the scene where, where Ben finds Janet in his house, mm-hmm. that... The acting in that just felt too calm, I have to say. I felt like it should it should have been a bit more tension in but that. But they were friends, so it's fine. Guess looking for too much drama here. So this is when we start cutting over into Rose's part of the movie. So it's two time streams running at the same time. One is Gunflint Lake in 1977, and the other is uh, New York City and also New Jersey as well in 1929. This is where I think... I th- I really, really enjoyed Rose's part of the movie because first of all, shot in all black and white. Originally, Rose. Like, yeah, Rose. Who's Rose? Oh, okay. You see, if you didn't read the book, you didn't even that know that was Rose. So the girl was Rose. So anyway, Rose's part of the movie is all shot in black and white, and the best part of this with no dialogue because she is deaf. This is where I think the movie excelled in. The sound design, you might have thought, oh, sound designer, okay, you know what, there's no talking, all he has to do is lay down a bed of music or anything. No, because there was no talking, there was so little audio to work with, so every little piece of sound has, like, great importance. So all those big stringers and every time something dramatic happened, you know, the music went with it. Yeah, I I get that. Yeah, like, every time there was, like, a jump cut or something, it was also, like, synced up to the music perfectly. And also, a uh, fun fact about that, the uh, actress who portrayed Rose is actually deaf in real life, so they had a lot of uh, sign language translators on set to, to work with them. Oh, and, and speaking of sign language, something I noticed, a lot, when a lot of the uh, actors, you know, write stuff down for the deaf people, they're all, all of them are really, they're all left-handed. Did you notice that? I didn't Ew. see any right-handed people in the movie. How did you even notice the people were writing? When they were writing on the paper, you know, writing up the notes, like, what are you doing here, or... Things like that. Yeah. So we cut back to Ben, and he, you know, he gets to New York, and he meets. He's looking for the Kincaid Bookstore, and then you know he he bumps into Jamie. Who we don't know is Jamie yet. In the book, Jamie's mom is the one who's supposed to be working at the library, but in in the movie, they decided to make it that his dad worked in the library. And I was wondering, okay, I, guess, I mean, I, I guess it makes sense, but I was listening to an interview yesterday, and it was the director's choice because they wanted to add a bit more diversity into the movie. Also, something I found a little weird, and I don't understand why they did it, is Rose cutting her hair. I, th- I mean, like she sold it, right? Is that what she did? She either sold it for the money to get on the ferry thingy, or she cut it because she just wanted to look like all those popular people who have uh, the short hair in her time. You know, yeah, she probably sold it to get the money because, you know, I mean, her family was rich, but if she asked for money, her dad was going to be like, what do you need the money for? So, I'm going to run away on a ferry to New York. Okay, no, you're not going to get the money. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. (laughs) Speaking of New York, a lot of the places they filmed were actual places in New York, so I didn't even know that whole panorama thing is an actual real place in New York City you can go to. Mm. Museum of Natural History was not. They actually got to shoot in the actual museum. It wasn't a set. So, you know, from here on, the timelines sync up in the museum as they go about, you know, their explorations and learning more. Oh, 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 oh about that. I like how they, they, they had the same thing. Like, at first, I thought it was just, oh, two different people yeah. who lived two different times. And they just have, like, the same story almost. I was like, oh, that's cool. But then, like, you know, they turned out to be related. And I was like, oh, you know, that's cool. You know, same family. Same story, cool. Yeah, when I when I reread the book, I was going through. I was like, wait, 
is it going to turn out to be, is, is Rose going to be his mom or something? That's what I originally thought was going to happen. I was like, yeah, no. I thought it was going to be like the story of his mom. Yeah, but it, it was, Rose turns out to be his grandma. So after Ben finds the new Kincaid's bookstore, which I, I, I didn't realize something until later, Kincaid is the last name of Rose, and it's called Kincaid's because it's Walter's bookstore. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Okay, anyway. So their timelines sync up. You know, Rose finds the Wonderstruck book that falls out of Ben's bag. She realizes, like, Ben, is that you, Ben? Yeah, okay. He's like, how do you know me? And she's like, oh, yeah, come with me. And she explains the whole story of how his dad was the guy who built the wolf diorama, et cetera, went out to. Llama, yeah, llama. The, the wolf llama. <laughs> wolf diorama. And um, takes him out to the panorama, which is a huge replica miniature version of the New York City. At the end, we have a nice ending with sign language. A whole conversation in sign language. It's fun. Uh, also, during the explanation, I forgot about this, when they went to Panorama, did you see the flashback scenes were all like stop motion, but like little diorama sets? Mm-hmm. So, this is really, I, this is all the notes I, I took down because I have really no, no, no real big complaints about this. The cinematography was good. The set design is good. The sound design was good. I like the use of sign language. And, you know, this is one of the best movies I've seen in a while. I have to give it 8 out of 10 lightning bolts. Wow, how creative. I know, so creative. Last week was, was 6 out of 10 more BMCs. This week it's lightning bolts. What do you rate this? Oh, um, I'd say 8 too. Yeah. Because it was just not... Because there wasn't that much talking, you, I got bored. So, yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, he was sort of of recalling the whole silent film thing from the invention of Hugo Cabret that he had done. The What was that? Mies film period, whatever it's called. Oh, man. All the film critics are out there shaking their fists at me. Anyway. Shocking. <laughs> pretty good film i would have maybe bumped it up to nine if the act one was like paced better but hey it's good now uh like we said at the beginning this this movie sort of inspired us to stay up after watching it and like relearn this is the sign language alphabet i already knew it i i never forgot it there was I, i i knew it too the only thing i forgot was f yeah i i i need help with f and t those are the ones i'm not good at but if you would like to learn sign language, to go back and watch it and understand some of the sign language conversations, we'd recommend you start with signing time and then go watch some other videos. Yeah. I mean, it's made for kids, but you could still learn from it. Mm-hmm. I mean, cookies and, and crackers are ingrained into our brain. Oh, yes. And if you have an Amazon Prime um, account, you can go on to the x-ray part of the movie and look at some of the behind-the-scenes pictures of the set and stuff. Which, actually, I saw they had a huge visual effects section in the credits. I was like, why do they need so many visual effects people? Turns out, when I was watching a behind-the-scenes video, almost all the background sets, like, you know, the 1970s and 1920s, were all visual effects. Wait, the background sets? What are you talking about? Yeah, you know how, like, the backgrounds, they they showed old-timey buildings and stuff? Or, like, or, like... In the 1970s, they showed all those, those weird, you know, old, falling-apart buildings. No. Well, he didn't notice it because it was so good visual effects. That's I, I fell asleep. Yeah. So, that's all for this week. What's your recommendation of the week? Do you recommend people go watch Wonderstruck? If you want. I'll just tell you there's better movies. Yeah. I'd say read the book and then watch the movie. Just to, like, enjoy the pictures. Or just you like can't enjoy those pictures. I didn't even look at them. I just went to the reading part. There's pencil pictures. And that that's a first time for you. I know. You went to go read it instead of looking at the pictures. Because they're wow. black and white, and they're just there. They weren't even doing anything. All right. They weren't describing anything. <laughs> Thanks for listening this week. If it's your first time, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Links for all the locations we are available at rta.space slash listen. If you have any suggestions or you want to send us some jokes to be on the show, you can email us rocket to anywhere show at gmail.com or tweet at us at rta show. You can also DM us on Instagram at rocket to anywhere. 
Show notes for this week's episode, links to pictures and, and, and learn sign language and stuff like that, all sorts of resources, rta.space slash 46. You can follow me on Twitter at Corbon Garcia. And me on Instagram at Bailey and Rushy. We'll be back week after next to discuss Paddington 2 and the unpleasant Peter Capaldi. Until then, why do people say goodbye? Have a good day.